Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the study of antiquity and the Middle Ages. As always, I am your host, Nick Barksdale, and today I'm bringing you a very special episode that once again dives into controversial topics in modern history. This topic actually being the origins of the American Civil War and debunking lost cause narratives. And to do that, I wanted to start off by bringing a very special guest. I'm truly honored to have him on this channel, and that is Mr. Kevin Levin. He's the author of a fantastic book, and that is Searching for Black Confederates, The Civil War's Most Persistent Myth. Without further ado, Mr. Levin, thank you so much for coming on the show today. My pleasure, Nick. Great to be here. And now I want to approach a myth that you have spent a lifetime researching and studying. And that is the myth of the Black Confederate. Would you expand on this and explain what is it, how does it develop, and how is it wrong? Yeah, so this is, um, I would argue, is sort of a, a modern version of an aspect of the lost cause myth of the loyal, of the loyal slave. As I mentioned earlier, um, coming out of the war, former Confederates will argue to their graves that enslaved people remain loyal to their masters on the home front and uh, remain loyal uh, to the army and the Confederacy as a whole until the end of the war. You know, in the first few decades, you know, actually into the early 20th century, former what were called body servants, former enslaved men who um, traveled into the army or accompanied their masters as personal slaves or body servants. Um, there were thousands of them, uh, you know, in various Confederate armies. Uh, and, you know, these men were, in terms of the memory of the war, remained really important because they were sort of the, um, they were easy to latch on to as the best examples of, of the loyal slaves. Some of these former slaves even attended Confederate veterans reunions in the 1880s and 1890s. And they, they were the living embodiment of the lost cause. They also attended uh, monument dedications into the 20th century. And so into the 20th century, there was no talk of black Confederate soldiers. And the reason for that, of course, is the Confederacy understood Confederates understood during the war what they were fighting for. That was uh, an independent slaveholding republic built on white supremacy. And it wasn't until the months of the war, um, specifically March of 1865, that the Confederacy actually passed legislation that allowed them uh, to recruit former slaves as soldiers, men freed by their masters that then were allowed to be recruited into the army. Up until then, there are no black Confederate soldiers. Uh, in fact, whenever there were reports of black men fighting as soldiers in the army in northern newspapers, Confederates went out of their way to deny this. Uh, they thought this; they were offended by it. Um, why would those northerners think we would we would sink so low to recruit black men into the army? So Confederate armies. I want to make this point because it's a really important one. Confederate armies relied heavily on enslaved labor. As I mentioned, there were thousands of body servants, or what I call in my book, camp slaves in the army. And there were thousands of impressed laborers um, working on various war projects throughout the Confederacy, um, digging earthworks, uh, repairing rail lines. Uh, they would have been working in the places like the Tredegar Ironworks, um, creating munitions, you know, in Richmond. And there were thousands of impressed men in the armies themselves. And so for one example, uh, Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia in the summer of 1863 during the Gettysburg campaign, uh, that army may have numbered somewhere around 75,000. There may have been as many as 10 to 12,000 enslaved men in that army. So it really does sort of drive home how important slavery was to the Confederacy during the war. But it's only in the last few decades that modern lost cause advocates or neo-Confederates have embraced this black Confederate soldier narrative. And as far as I can tell, and I, I, I make this argument in the book, it's not until the mid 1970s that there's really any sustained talk about black Confederate soldiers. Again, up until that point in time, it was loyal slaves, loyal body servants. Um, and I think that's 
that shift happens for a couple of reasons. Um, and I'll make this point quickly. It happens because Americans are now re- beginning to remember a, a very different war, a war that is now uh, acknowledging the centrality of emancipation, the participation of roughly 200,000 Black Union soldiers or United States soldiers. And that shift in memory of the war places neo-Confederates in a tough position because they don't want to acknowledge emancipation. They don't want to acknowledge slavery as a cause of the war. And so to counter emancipation, to counter Black Union soldiers, they begin to sort of embrace this idea of Black Confederate soldiers. And it takes some time for it to, to sort of mushroom. But it's another example of the way in which the internet has come to shape uh, this debate, this public debate about the war, because the, the Black Confederate soldier narrative really doesn't take off before the advent of the internet. And today you can find hundreds, if not thousands of websites devoted to these mythical Black Confederate soldiers. And they work or they are successful um, because, again, most people don't know how to interpret these primary sources, whether they are photographs, wartime, or post-war, whether they are, you know, newspaper accounts, wartime or post-war. Um, and if you also, on top of that, don't know how to assess the website itself, that's a that's just a really, you know, um, toxic mixture. And uh, it sends any number of people down, down the rabbit hole. And uh, these are people, for the most part, you know, I would argue, who are not you know, most people who, I, who I've come across who embrace this narrative, they haven't done so because they are neo-Confederates or they're trying to protect an ancestor's legacy. They embrace it because they don't know any better, right? And, uh, and so one of the purposes of the book was to sort of have something out there that could, you know, function to disentangle some of these myths and, and begin to give people a foundation not just to understand um, the myth itself and how it evolved, but the war itself, right? The broader war, the importance of slavery, and how these stories take hold uh, slowly over time. I can't encourage you as my subscribers enough to check out the links in the video description below. It's going to take you to all of the awesome work that Mr. Levin is doing to better educate people like me and you on the subjects that we all love. I can't recommend his work enough and I highly encourage you all check him out, give him your full support and help make history matter. Mr. Levin, thank you so much for coming on the show today. My pleasure. Really enjoyed it.